Okay, my project today is to rebuild my barn door tracker. I wanted to use it for the eclipse this year and found that the motor had died, so I need to rebuild it. And I got this very inexpensive uh, synchronous motor off of eBay for only two bucks. Uh, and um, these come out of uh, microwave uh, turntables, is why they're so cheap. Um, this is six RPMs. They have. You could also want, use one that's uh, three RPM. And uh, it's actually bi-directional. Uh, this one normally runs counterclockwise, but if you hold a shaft for for a second, it'll actually run in the, in the uh, clockwise direction. If you notice, your microwave will run in two different directions. That means you could also use it in the southern hemisphere. But. <clears throat> You also need a uh, six RPM is, t is too fast uh, to turn the uh, the main gear. So I use uh, two gears to slow it down. Uh, the main gear it has um, 96 teeth, and it's actually pretty much the same as this gear that you can get from uh, McMaster 96 teeth. And um, my mine has just a little bit smaller hub to it. Um, this gear you can get from McMaster is number um, 576-55K31. Um, it's 14, uh, it's a 48 pitch uh, gear. And this smaller gear I'm using is, um, has 20 teeth and it's a 576-55K15. So I, I drilled out the, the center of, of this gear did leave a lot of wall thickness, but that's still okay. I can still press it on and add a little glue and it'll be fine. Since it's counterclockwise, the, um, the main gear is going to turn uh, clockwise. And it will actually, um, let's see here. Um, if you if you have uh, so this is our main gear and it's stationary and you turn it clockwise it will push up the threaded rod so uh, it's important to know uh, where you mount the motor so that the uh, the um, threaded rod will be pushed up Okay, now that I have the, the motor that I'm going to use, and I know its motor speed is 6 RPM, and I have the two gears, so uh, we need to calculate the radius of the curved bolt, and this is a curved bolt drive, which I invented, by the way. Um, this gear has 20 teeth, and this gear, the larger gear, has 96 teeth. And if you divide 96 or, or divide 20 by 96 and multiply that times six uh, revolutions per minute, then this gear will turn 1.25 revolutions in a minute. So now uh, 1.25, you multiply that times the number of minutes in a serial day, which is 1436, and you come up with 1795 revolutions of this gear in a day and uh, from that you divide 1795 by 24 threads per inch because the, the threaded rod has 24 threads per inch and divide that uh, also by pi you come up with uh, 23.80 seven inches for the curved bolt if, if it was a complete circle but divide that that diameter by two and you get the radius of 11.903 inches now uh, to, be, to bend my curved rod first I need to draw a, uh, a radius and I've got my compass here and, and um, the radius we need is 11.903 but we need to add half of the 
uh, half the diameter of the threaded rod, uh, 0.181. So it comes out to almost exactly 12 inches. So I, I set my compass to, to 12 inches here. And then I'm just going to draw a, um, a radius on this piece of paper. <laughs> Let's try that again. Just going to draw a radius. My pen will work here. And that will give me the curve of the outer edge of the curved bolt. So now we need to bend the rod to this curve. And um, the 10, 1024 is a little bit easier than the uh, quarter 20, so it's, it's not really hard that, to bend. You want to start a little bit in from it, and you want to make just small bends. Um, and it takes a little bit of force. But you want to compare it to the, to the curve. And two things are important. You want to, you want to match the curve, and you want it to lay flat. And um, once you get started, it gets actually gets easier to do. You don't want sharp bends. You want just a gradual bend, because a sharp bend will will jam the nut. And see, it matches here, but um, you have to play around with it and always push it in the same direction and make sure that it uh, it's not too steep soon. So now I've got it too steep so I can back it back a little bit and basically you want to keep doing this until you match a good section of curve. It looks pretty good up in here to where I've bent it. And we keep doing it. Anyway, and you can uh, you can get the uh, get a curved bolt from not a curved bolt. You can get a threaded rod from McMaster. This is ten twenty four. All right, um, I've got my curved rod. Next thing you need uh, are the top and bottom boards and stuck together with hinges. And this is from my old mount that I'm rebuilding. It had a longer radius, so I cut it off. Uh, it's got two brass hinges. Um, the only thing that's important is that it has to be longer, a little, little bit longer than your radius, because you got to mount things on it. I had to make the bottom board thinner because the shaft of this synchronous motor is not real long, so so that um, it will the two gears will mesh up, and so I ran it across my table saw a bunch of times. You could use a router, I suppose, or you could also use make it out of aluminum, which is thinner. So. Um, with that made, um, I need to make a mark for the radius. You have to consider the thickness of the hinge, so I had to measure half the hinge thickness. Subtract that from my radius and I come up with 11 and 3 quarters inches. You need to make a mark um, so that I can drill a hole through both boards, which is the next thing to do. Another thing I need to do is to mark my curved rod to where uh, the end of the, th this fr front section I didn't bend it straight and it starts on the curve and I want to mark at the end of, of the rod where it uh, still matches the curve and um, I put two marks here. Um, that's about five inches. It's, well over an hour and a half of tracking. That's more than enough. 
All right, so I drilled two clearance holes and bolted the curved bolt straight section into the top board. I used um, nuts and washers on each side. And the uh, problem is when I'm tightening this thing up, when I tighten one, it moves the bolt away. So you need to use wrenches on each side and as you're tightening it up you need to tighten from both sides so that, so that the uh, rod is lined with the hole. But note that I'm, I'm missing the hole by the top part so I have to bend this rod right at the nut so that the um, uh, so that the bolt goes through the hole. I've bent my curved bolt right at the nut. Now it goes nice and smoothly through here. But I did have to take a round file uh, because whenever the bolt goes through the bottom board it doesn't go through quite straight. So you need to take a, a round file and kind of um, kind of make the whole hourglass shaped and kind of open it up on the back side to give it a little bit of, little bit of uh, more room going through. So when you're done it should uh, go nice and smoothly back and forth like that. Okay, now that I've got that part done, I need to mount the motor and it goes behind the curved bolt. Let's see that I had to cut away some more wood for the back of the motor to fit on. <clears throat> also have to measure the distance between the gear centers, the calipers, and that comes up to 1.190 inches. And so I'll have to drill a hole, a clearance hole, um, for the gear um, motor gear and shaft to go and then I'll need to uh, drill a couple of mounting holes for these tabs of the motor to mount. I have my motor mounted and the mounting holes uh, I made a little bit oversized so I had a little bit of room to slide the motor back and forth a little bit so that it engages the gear nut properly. Um, got to put a little washer between the gear nut and the wood and a little nut on the end just for safety so the camera doesn't flip over. Um, you notice that the uh, gear nut's going uh, clockwise like it should be. Um, soldered on a 110 cord and it's uh, about ready to hook up and set it on my tripod. So here's my barn door tractor put back together. Um, using a green laser for uh, polar alignment. Some people want to use a um, finder or you can simply just slide along the hinges to the pole. Um, this uh, camera adapter <clears throat> you can get on eBay not very expensive, but I uh, put a spacer on mine so that I could get it away from the top of the board because in some orientations I get interference with the camera. I have mine mounted on a, a block of wood cut to my latitude, but you could simply use a threaded insert and uh, put it on the camera tripod until it gets to the end. It'll it, uh, You don't want to get to the very end, but... Um, you can simply reset this by, by spinning the gear nut back to the start position, which is here. And let it re-engage and it's good to go for another hour and something. Very easy project.